Welcome everyone at SEMA Central. I'm Dennis Pitsenbarger. We're here at SEMA 2015. And I just saw the most outrageous video from my friend Chip <laughs> Foos. Man, you want to talk about the SEMA crunch. When you start the SEMA crunch, we all know what it is. But when you start setting cars on fire, <laughs> you got to tell everybody here that story. I mean, that's just one of those things that we, we can't pass up and talk about. Well, this car is about 75% all hand fabricated steel body and fenders and shape. We started with Speed 33, uh, designed a top for it so it no longer has that lift up back uh, panel that the, f the convertible top folds into. It is now a hard top. We designed to build oh, so the top. So that's all solid now. Yeah, that's all solid. And we've been working on this car for three and a half years. We decided we were going to unveil it here at SEMA in the BASF booth, which it is here. <laughs> but a week before the opening, SEMA starts on Tuesday. The Tuesday before, 5 o'clock Tuesday evening, we had the car all masked off, ready to go in the booth and get color, because we were down to the last minute. Now, if I remember right, at this point, you already have the belly painted and we, the firewall done. We had painted the floor and the firewall. And, you know, mistakes can happen and things can happen to anybody, and we are proof of it now. <laughs> the first real fire that we've ever had at Foos Design. And, uh, you know, we were lucky that it was all that it was because all that masking paper, the whole thing was masked off. I had asked one of my guys to change the way the rotisserie was mounted on the car. I didn't like the way it was mounted. I thought it was going to do some damage if we rotated it. So I had asked him earlier. He was busy on some other things. By the time he had gotten to it, we had already masked the whole interior of the car and the firewall in the bottom. So there was masking paper all over it. Well, he got in there and decided to do a little welding and move those brackets, and the paper caught fire. One little One little ember. thing, and the whole car, that, that paper was just like kindling. <laughs> it went up, and we had probably at least uh, eight foot of flames going up, and I was just hoping it wouldn't catch anything else on fire. Well, yeah. And Steve, our painter, he, he ran out and grabbed the garden hose, which is right outside the door. We had fire extinguishers, but nobody grabbed those. <laughs> he grabs a hose and comes running in, and I'm running, I saw it from the other side of the shop, I'm running in, and I see Steve coming around with a hose, and I'm like, oh, okay, we're going to get it out. But right as he was getting about uh, 10 feet from the car, the hose was all wrapped up on the reel, and it stops him. Oh, God. <laughs> so when I saw that, I ran outside and started peeling it off. He had gotten the, to the firewall underside the car, and he was in the back getting everything out in the trunk. And when I came back in, I saw that the interior was starting to go up, and I didn't want to see any of the sheet metal warp or anything. So I yelled at him, get the inside, get the inside. And we got it all out. It was 40 seconds from start to finish. But we charred the bottom, we charred the firewall, blistered a couple things, uh, charred some of the primer. And uh, first thing I did is I pushed it outside, started sanding and cleaning things up, and I noticed that everybody was gone. And we had a motorhome on the, on the property so that, because we had just done basically three days with no sleep trying to get it to this point, to get it in the booth. And I went to the motor room and said, what's everybody doing? They go, well, we're not going to make it now. I said, yes, we are. Yeah. So at 2.30 in the morning, we actually got it back in the booth and started painting the outside. We finished the outside. Then Thursday, we repainted the bottom, the firewall, rubbed those out, bolted that body to the chassis on Friday afternoon after lunch. And the, tr the car left to come here Monday at 9 o'clock. It is a drivable running car finished. The only thing that's not in it is the side glass. And, and that's one of those things that just amazes you about SEMA. And when people's dedication is this, because I, you let, you gotta post that video. You <laughs> let me look at it up here. If you don't post that, I'm gonna call you and text you and bug you until you do, man, because that is just one of those things that truly proves that when you want to get it done, if you want to get it done, it's gonna get done. It had to get done. And the car came out great. Thank I mean, I, I was much. over there checking it out at the BASF booth. But as a Chevy guy and an Impala guy, I mean, my first car was a 64 Bel Air. So you knew oh, cool. I was all over that Impala, the, the Riddler winner. I mean, just amazing. I loved all the little touches. Thank you. It's those things that craftsmen do that move things just enough, just enough to make it different. And that car is truly a star within itself. I mean, amazing build. What's amazing is how subtle it is because most people look at it, would never know what's been done to it. The car is shortened 14 inches. We've chopped it an inch and a half. Uh, every single light, the grill, every molding, all the moldings, like that back window is a huge window. And that is one piece brass molding that has been chrome plated and dropped in there. So there's no seams and no ripples. And if you follow the reflection off the paint, it follows right into the molding and then goes into the glass. But uh, it's all those little details that take hours and hours and hours. And here at SEMA, you only get to see the top of that car. Yeah. But there's more work in the bottom of that car than all of the top. And that's the thing. You almost want to put that thing up on a lift, on a four-poster, uh, and let people walk under it all day. It's a piece of artwork underneath. And that's what you have to do to compete for an award like the Riddler. 
And when Don Voth, you know, he originally wanted to build this car for his wife, and when he said he wanted it for his wife, I thought, you know, you don't want to give a woman a hot rod that's ever going to have a problem, because if it ever dies on her somewhere, she's never going to want to get in it again. Yeah. So I said, let's go buy a brand new Corvette, put this body on top of it, we'll shorten it up, we'll, we'll have some fun with it, and then she can drive it, it'll be reliable. If she has a problem, she can pull into any dealership, plug it in, get a part, and be on our way again. And the original plan was to leave all of those pieces from the Corvette in its factory finishes. And I mean, the complete wire loom, the GPS, the OnStar, everything is in that car. Wow. Uh, you know, the steering I mean, wheel, no, the I steering mean, I, As a body and paint guy, I just look at all the crafts and work on the car. I mean, that, everybody appreciates that car for different reasons. The seats, I didn't realize how much that stuff was The in. seats, the steering wheel, the column, the dash, everything is from that Corvette in its original position. We just changed the body and the glass on that car, but majorly. <laughs> yeah. And when he said he wanted to take it to the Riddler, I was like, not with this car, because it's it's like going and buying a brand new Corvette and then taking it to the Riddler to win. What are you going to do to the bottom of that car to make it beautiful? That's what we had to do. So that's why there's so much work in the bottom. Yeah. Every single piece is still the original part, other than the MagnaFlow exhaust, and we put a Magnuson supercharger on it. Everything else is from the Corvette and just dressed and made to be as beautiful as we could possibly make it. Well, it's, that's the essence of a hot rod. Take and something, make it your own, make it better. Well, then the rest of it, all the styling cues, the lights, the gas door, the side vents, what I wanted to do was, I looked at that car <coughs> as if in 1965, the Corvette studio decided to build a muscle car as well as the sports car that we know and love. And so all the styling cues, I just put my mind frame in what General Motors was doing in 1965 with the Corvette, how would they have approached a muscle car? So that's what it was as far as the exterior of the car, the bumpers, everything's handmade, built, finished, to look like this is the way it could have come from the factory other than now we put modern technology into it. Can you imagine, I just had a crazy thought, what if you would have got a job, maybe born 20 years before you were and got a job and worked with Bill Mitchell? I, I, I think it would have been, I, I just had an, a, a, an epiphany of how amazing Chevrolet cars already are, but if I could have just snuck you into that building for the rest of your life, I mean, it was just one more crazy chapter. Wherever you would have landed, you would have had that impact, I think. I've been lucky enough to work with some of the OEMs and uh, I, I've been involved with some really cool projects that unfortunately my name never gets to be mentioned on. I'm, uh, you know, I'm a consultant and I'm kept in the dark, but I have absolutely loved every one of those projects that I've worked on. And I will say that Jay Mays was incredible when he was at Ford. I had a lot of fun with a lot of the projects that, yeah. were, that were happening there. And uh, unfortunately, he, he left, and uh, I haven't been involved with Ford since then. But uh, I've, I've worked with a lot of the car companies and done some really cool projects. Well, there's some guys, some executives out here, when they see you, they kind of give you the, you know, the, <laughs> we know, we know, we know. Let's talk about now, when he saw the other night, you were up at uh, 3M. New Cubitron 2, some really cool products at 3M. Again, innovation is what they're all about. Maybe talk about your relationship with 3M, because I know it's very important to them and to you. Well, I've been officially involved with 3M for a little over five years now, but I have actually worked with their products for over 40 years. I started working in my father's shop. I say working, but I, you know, I went to my dad's shop and started helping him. I thought it was help. I think I destroyed more than I actually helped. <laughs> but his shop was an, originally an all 3M product shop as well. And I remember as a kid, the finest sandpaper we, that 3M made was 600 grit. So you sanded that paint with 600, and then you actually polished those scratches out. Yeah. And it was labor intensive. Oh yeah, that now, was a wool wheel and a lot of elbow. So, uh, you know, I have to give credit to 3M because they make the best products out there, but they continue to innovate and develop better products. So now we've got 5,000 grit, and you know, you sand that paint job down to 5,000 grit, and it's effortless to bring up the shine. Yeah. And you know, it's it's amazing how much easier it is to create the finishes that we have because of the 3M products. But also their Cubitron, you know, that technology where as that paper is getting worn out, the tops of those grits break and off break. and expose sharp grits again. It lasts so much longer in their cutoff wheels. One of my biggest pet peeves in, in fabricating is when you're using a cutoff wheel, it would go away so quick and you gotta change it. And I wish there was a quick disconnect for a cutoff wheel. I've been asking 3M <laughs> to create that tool, but uh, you know, you have to find the tools, the Allen wrench, the two the wrenches, wheel, twist them pull it off, out. replace that wheel, and, and I hate that part of the job. <laughs> so I have five cutoff wheels that I replace all the wheels when I start my project. I just, so I just grab them and switch because I hate that part of it. But now they've got that Cubitron too. You know, that wheel lasts about four or five times longer. Yeah. 
yeah, and I'm stuff. not having to change it. And it's, you know, it's that technology and innovation that they keep developing better tools and, and thank you to 3M for doing that. And it is truly an honor for me to have my brand, Foos, associated with a company like 3M. I think anybody who's a car guy would do themselves good service to go to their innovation center. I've been lucky enough to go through it, I know you have as well, mm -hmm. and you look at the way they apply technology. It's so amazing, all the way from dentistry to car guy stuff. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's just one of those things I think everybody really needs to experience because you don't realize how much they have their fingers into so much technology, the way that they take little pieces from anything to make it better. They have that rapid molding stuff that they use, that the dentists use to pull yeah. you know, molds off of teeth. I use that to make parts in the shop. That's what I'm so talking we about. We might clay model something really quick, pull a mold off of that, and then we're pouring resin in and creating the piece. Uh, in the Grand Master, the actual gear shift knob has the, the cruise control set up in it. So as you're shifting, you can actually set that cruise control. When that car won the Riddler in 2002, it actually had cruise control and everything set up working. And you made that out of the mold? Made that with the mold that they used to make a tooth mold. That's amazing. One last thing before we let you go. Chip, even last night, when I saw you at 3M, we were talking for a minute and you're like, hey, I said, hey, what do you got going on later? He said, oh, well, I'm gonna go to dinner. I, gotta, I think it's about 7.30. And I was watching you do your thing, which is, you know, you know how many stories I hear? I'm, I'm this guy, you're this guy. And every single day I hear story after story about you taking your time to talk and interact and be with every single person. And then it was seven, and it was 7.30, and I remember I looked over again, and I'm like, are you supposed to go to dinner? And you looked at me and go, well, you know, there's still people here. Chip, you embody and really ignite everyone here to be part of this industry. And I can't thank you enough, because you, everybody here, seriously. Thank you. I was just talking about, you were at uh, breakfast with mm -hmm. your luggage. And you remembered, I gotta go back because I said I was gonna meet somebody's husband. Mm -hmm. So you walk back and you truck the luggage all the way back there. It's just one of a thousand stories why you are truly one of the best ambassadors of this industry and everything we love about the automobile. So I, I'm, I'm honored to call you a friend. And well, thank uh, man, you, I'm honored too. You're just one of the greatest guys out there. It comes down to something that my mom told me as a little kid. Treat people the way you want to be treated. It's really simple. Well, you know what? I, I think everybody here, please, one round of applause. Thank you. He is, I mean, I, I want to hug you. I, I you wanna, can do that. I'll give you a hug. Come here. It was the best. Now, the mic guy just hated me, but that's okay. <laughs> More from SEMA Central, everybody right here. Chip Foose, we'll be back soon. <laughs>